This is not an app. It's not on the App Store and it's certainly not an online subscription. It's an entirely new way of thinking about personal software. It runs as a web interface, so works seamlessly on any device on my network, including phones and tablets, and it uses no cloud storage. It uses open source libraries for insane pro-level power, but unlike many open source apps with clunky UIs, this one feels polished and looks good. It has full keyboard shortcuts and a workflow that meets my exact specification. It uses my own files on my own hard drives and keeps everything open so I can still plug in other tools as needed. The insane thing is I built all this with Claude Pro, which means I actually own the software. And I think this might be the most exciting thing to ever happen in personal computing. It's the democratization of the command line and it's fascinating. This is the second video in a series looking at how I've started building my own software after realizing Apple's hobbling of the Photos app was clearly designed to keep me locked into a storage subscription. I decided to take back control and build my own tools my way. In the last video, I dived into the problem itself, how the walled garden approach left us with software like Apple Photos with all the important tools left out, which destroyed any hope of the enjoyment to be had from a proper curated photo library. In this video, I'm gonna explore how I built this tool, looking at the overall concepts and technical considerations to show how I took open source command line libraries and packaged them up into a real keyboard focused workflow app with a polished user experience. The app I'm using as the example is my photo library tool, but this approach could apply to almost anything. I'm gonna share the tips I've discovered along the way so that you can hopefully use this as a starting point to try making your own software too and avoid some of the mistakes I made. The concept for this new way of thinking about software is remarkably simple. I took a bunch of command line libraries, usually totally open source, and then created Python scripts to connect them all up into the kinds of workflows I wanted to use them for. And then I built a lightweight HTML, JavaScript, and CSS front-end interface that makes working with those Python scripts truly a polished experience. This is served using quick one-line Python servers that expose the UI on a specific port. This makes the entire application run exactly the same way, no matter which device I use on my network. And it would, of course, also be trivial to expose this publicly if you wanted to jump into the security implications and felt you needed access away from home. I use SQLite databases to allow everything to run super fast while keeping all the original data fully supporting the native file system using files and folders as normal. We add aggressive caching and thumbnail generation when dealing with things like photos to make sure any old device can still offer a fast experience, even when all this runs over a local network. I'm using a Mac here, but this approach is gonna work equally well on Windows and Linux. And that's really another wonderful thing about this approach. The more you go down this road, the more you're setting up a computing stack that becomes platform agnostic. You're free to make hardware choices based on hardware alone. All the scripting and coding was done by Claude Code running on my Mac. And of course, this is the bit that makes it so exciting. Whilst it's true I could have built this without it, it would have just taken so much longer and it's just time I don't have to put into personal projects like this. So for me, it lets me do this kind of thing in my spare time, but the Claude Code approach is also the reason the whole approach is hugely significant to anyone who uses computers because it really makes this kind of thing available to anyone. A good understanding of the overall concept is useful, but if you just asked it to do what you hear about in this video, you could probably recreate this with very little trouble. A lot of people are very cynical of AI for largely good reason, but when you see it have an impact like this on empowering individuals and letting people get truly bespoke software workflows without needing to buy into large app store ecosystems, you start to realize this has the potential to be really quite wonderful for the individual, and I really like that. My first attempts at this were a little bit underwhelming. The UI would load my original files on demand over the network, which would show quite a delay if I was using this on a device that wasn't actually connected to the hard drive with my files on. And this also applied to the thumbnails in the gallery. So it quickly became clear to me I needed thumbnail generation and aggressive caching and preloading. So in this tool, the photo import scripts generate thumbnails that get stored on the main device drive to allow for instant performance when used on that device and as good as the network will allow when using another device. And these are sized exactly at the optimum size for the UI thumbnails. Then the web interface preloads everything. As soon as you select a thumbnail, it starts preloading the next 100 full-size images to get them in memory. This means that when you go into the full-size display, you get an instant response when you flick through the images. This kind of performance feels even snappier than Apple Photos, and it's quite amazing to see my full-resolution photos displayed this responsively, even on an old, slow device running over my network. 
This whole approach is all about keeping control. So it seemed clear to me that this would use a folder of files as the main source of the data. If anything in that folder gets added or removed or changed, all our scripts would automatically handle that. We don't want to be in a position where we can easily break something just by changing a file. And we don't want the solution to that to be removing access completely either. Apple Photos, I'm looking at you. When we work with file systems as the basis of computer workflows, one thing it's worth getting your head around is the difference between hard links and sim links and even cow links or ref links. A big part of my photo library workflow is making galleries out of collections of photos. And I wanted those to be represented on my file system and behave exactly like real folders of files but I also wanted some tricks. For example, if I use an EXIF tool to change the rotation metadata for an image in a gallery, I'd want that to apply to the original as well. And as long as you use the right flag with the EXIF tool, this works really well with hard links. Incidentally, the reason I didn't use sim links here is because the finder doesn't show thumbnail previews of sim linked images like it does with hard links. This tool makes extensive use of metadata within the photos and it can create galleries from date ranges or cameras or lenses used. So to make sure the scripts can quickly and easily work with that data, I decided to use an SQLite database to store all of this information. Our initial import scripts extract all this data once and then map it to the original file and allow for extremely fast processing of things like generating lists of files that meet certain criteria. And it's interesting because of course that data all still exists in the original files. We're just progressing aggressively enhancing it for performance as we need to with the database layer. SQL Lite databases are fantastic for this. They exist as standalone files that can just live in your main project folder. And then simple command line queries can be run to extract the results as and when needed. There's no constantly running services or complex config. This is just a command line tool and a single file and it's insanely fast. The best thing about the way this is all set up is how it empowers your devices on your network in the same way. Individual machine performance is no longer relevant to your experience using the software. You can have the scripts running on your fastest machine and then just view the UI on any device in exactly the same way with only a slight difference in performance. What I discovered when setting this up is that Python can be used to turn any folder on your Mac into a web document root with a one line command. And this is such a simple and powerful way to set up a project like this, taking an HTML file and making it available over your network on a given port. Again, no complex Apache configuration needed, just start the server and hit the page in a browser. It works with full support for Ajax requests back to other Python scripts too. It's a complete but tiny and portable web server available in a single command. The real power in all this comes from all the amazing open source projects in the world that use command line as their main interface, using Python scripts to pull it all together and turn the CLI syntax into an exposed API endpoint that our front end UI can post to. I've always been interested in the power of open source libraries like these, but until now, it's been too time consuming to really put anything together outside of work context. Now we can do this on a Sunday morning over coffee with Claude Code, and it's incredibly empowering. I'm using powerful raw processing and face detection libraries as part of this tool, but you can hook up AI tools to create all kinds of interesting workflows. And I'm also experimenting with a tool that analyzes my B-roll shots, catalogs them, and generates Final Cut Pro projects with the clips on a timeline based on whatever prompt I give it. What's fascinating about this whole approach is just how effective using an HTML, JavaScript, and CSS front end has been. As long as you add in the preloading and consider things like using thumbnails, you can make an interface that looks exactly how you want. And when you run the browser, browser in full screen mode, you get a really great full size UI to play with. Using Ajax calls back to the Python scripts allows the interface to directly work with those command line scripts. And there is your power user workflow right before you. As always, many thanks to the members on this channel. Your support is hugely appreciated. Uh, not only do you get access to the Zettelcast and Notes Vault that includes all of the research and everything that goes into these videos, you also get access to the scripts um, that I talk about in these things as well now, sort of building this library of scripts and useful utilities and things. So there available, um, different scripts are available to different members uh, of different levels on this channel as well. So the best, most polished versions of these things are reserved for the top tier members on this channel. Do check out this other video where I look in much more detail about the main problems with the Apple Photos approach and why I wanted to build this tool. And I'll see you there.